Welcome back to day 8 of random math stuff. You can take 145, then split it up into parts. Now notice that the factorial of those parts add up back to 145. Here's another number with this property, 40,585. It's got the same thing going on. And I conjecture, which is just a fancy math term for guess, that you can do this with infinitely many positive integers. Now if you want to have something meaningless named after yourself too, here's how to do it. Step 1. Don't try to prove a theorem or anything like that. It's quite difficult to get a theorem named after yourself. You have to prove something particularly interesting or useful, and neither of us have the capability to do that. But what we can do is make random guesses, then call them conjectures. So that's what we're going to do. Step 2. Mess around for a while. Here's what I mean by that. Take some random math topic, then just explore it for a bit, asking yourself questions, and answer them if you can. For example, I ran into this message on the community discord, and I wondered, is this property unique to the number 145? So I searched it up, and I learned that these types of numbers are called factorions, and there are only four of them. But didn't my conjecture say that there were an infinite amount? Yes, because in my conjecture, we could split the number any way we liked, whereas with factorions, you must split the number into digits. This brings me to my first tip. Don't do what's been done before. This may seem obvious, but if you're trying to make new math, you shouldn't mess around with established math. You should take established math, like factorions, then add some sort of spin to it. There is one exception to this rule, though. Primes. It turns out that mathematicians have no idea how prime numbers work. Which means, if you come up with a random dumb fact about prime numbers, there's a good chance that no one on earth has the answer to your question, which makes for a perfect conjecture. Okay, before step 3, I need to complain a little bit. If you don't want to hear it, skip to this timestamp. I tried making another conjecture about primes as an example for this video, and when I was messing around, I asked the question, which numbers in this sequence are prime? So I just typed into the Google search bar, is 111 prime, is 1111 prime, and so on. And then I got to 1111111, seven ones, and immediately the first thing I see is, no, it's not prime. The number is equal to 11 times 101 times 101. And I was kind of on autopilot at the time, so I just kept going, trying to find a pattern. But then my two brain cells said to each other, wait a minute, how is this number divisible by 11? There are seven ones, and the divisibility rule for 11 says that this isn't a multiple of 11. So I put this into the calculator, and lo and behold, the Google AI is just completely wrong. And now I've seen those videos where Google AI tells you to put glue on pizza and stuff like that, but I get how it could mess that up. It saw a sarcastic Reddit comment and thought it was real. But I genuinely have no idea where this could have come from. Where did Google AI learn to be bad at basic multiplication? But I said to myself, ignore it, just don't use the AI feature from now on. So I scrolled down. Okay, this just says no. It would be nice if you could give me the factor so that I could verify but I'll scroll down some more looking for factors because I want to be sure that the number's composite. I get some related questions that don't answer my question at all. And finally, I get to a source that will tell me the factors of 1111111. Great, the factors are 1, itself, and other numbers. What the hell is this? You genuinely can't make this up. This is ridiculous. I scroll down some more. Even more useless crap. I have to scroll through this bullshit AI response, this crap without any inkling of explanation, useless related questions, and five web pages before I get something that finally tells me the factors so that I can check whether it's lying or not. I'm almost at the end of the page. Okay, sure, maybe I should have searched for the numbers factors, but come on, Google should be better than this. I should be able to ask the global number one search engine whether a number is prime or not and get a response with some explanation behind it. Okay, time for step number three. By now you should have asked yourself a lot of questions. Some of them have answers and some of them don't. We're going to take the ones without answers, and out of those questions, we're going to pick the most interesting and difficult one. Try to get a combination of the two. Of course, you have no way of knowing which questions are difficult since you don't know the answer to them, but just pick the ones that sound difficult. Step 4. Turn the question into a conjecture. Here, you want to make the question as difficult to prove as possible. For example, my question was, are there infinitely many positive integers that have this property? Now, at the time, I only knew two numbers with the property. Even after searching, I wasn't able to find a third. So why did I conjecture that there were infinitely many when I only had two? Because if I guessed that there were two, a single counterexample would be enough to disprove my conjecture. But if I say that there are infinitely many, it becomes a lot harder to prove me wrong or to prove me right. And that's what you want. Step 5. Spend a little time working on the conjecture to make sure it's actually difficult. It would be kind of embarrassing, say, if you made a conjecture in a YouTube video only for some guy to disprove it half an hour later. And that's it. Now you have your very own conjecture, and if you're lucky enough, mathematicians will find it interesting and you will be immortalized. Okay, I don't want this video to just be me talking about math instead of actual math, so here's some more cool stuff about factorions. 
As a reminder, these are the numbers that equal the sum of their digits factorials. The reason there's a finite amount of them, only 4, is because there's a limit to how big they can get. Think about it. The largest digit is 9, so the largest factorial you can get is 362,880. So you'll need to add a lot of 9 factorials to get to numbers like these. Unfortunately, there just aren't enough digits. The sum of digits factorials won't be able to keep up with the number itself, even if you make every digit 9. There are two solutions to this. Well, there are a lot more. These are just the two that I thought of. The first one is to split the numbers into blocks instead of digits, like I did in the conjecture. This way, there's really no limit anymore because you can make the blocks as large as you wish and factorials grow really fast. Even though I haven't been able to find a block factorion that's not these four, there's no reason for them to not exist, so there's probably one out there. So that's why my conjecture works and isn't completely trivial. The second solution is to multiply the factorials together instead of adding them. This also gets rid of the limit because products are a lot bigger than sums large enough to compete with a concatenation. These product factorions seem to be really rare though. You have 1 and 2, but I haven't been able to find a single other product factorion. They might not even exist. A thousand different things need to line up for a number to be a product factorion. Well, that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.